Thank you for inviting me to the Wellness Consortium's inaugural workshop. Um, I'm going to talk about augmented personalized health. Um, we at uh, Ohio Center of Excellence in Knowledge and Able Computing um, in Biohealth Innovation uh, work in a number of areas, health being the most significant one, where we have broad number of um, uh, projects uh, that deal with health, wellness, uh, fitness and other things. Uh, we are a large center with about 15 faculty and about 60 researchers, largely PhD students. In the health area, um, we uh, have a number of projects that start with foundational or theoretical work in representation of knowledge uh, and the creation of large knowledge graph cap capturing knowledge about a uh, broad variety of healthcare domain with specific uh, in-depth knowledge about particular disease we work with. Uh, we work on variety of information extraction techniques and understanding of social, uh, clinical, um, and other and, and Internet of Things, uh, digital uh, data collected by Internet of Things. Um, and then we work on specific projects that deal with um, um, uh, dark nets, uh, social media, different disease, uh, such as that. Um, our projects range from public policy and uh, a, uh, a population level studies to epidemiology to personalized digital care. And we deal with broad variety of data, uh, social, public health data, electronic medical record data, internet of things related data, or related to variety of disease situations. Um, the traditional healthcare um, uh, has come under pressure. Uh, there is limited data and uh, episodic visit, uh, you know, uh, don't help as well as um, the current and, and then the current technology allows for a lot more than what we could do today. There isn't as much time that the physician has to spend with the uh, patient uh, in, diff in certain circumstances. There is a lack of historical uh, knowledge. A physician doesn't have time to go through all the past clinical record, even if one is available. And so, uh, it plus, um, uh, there is a lack of uh, understanding of each of the individual uh, with the um, uh, new personalized uh, medicine related test, a uh, lot more data is becoming available and that we need to find a way to exploit all that data. So a um, revisionist, revisionist view of uh, medicine would be to um, fight and prevent uh, disease. Uh, for that we need to be able to predict uh, uh, in order to be able to prevent for future, to predict we need to uh, know uh, how one reacts to uh, uh, reacts in order to predict. Uh, for that we need data uh, uh, over a period of time. Uh, but patient, each patient is different, so uh, you can't just generalize. And uh, you need to co collect the data, uh, uh, patient generated health data, uh, and analyze that for individual patient. And thus it becomes. Um, a strategy for one, and we call this strategy augmented personalized health that I'm going to uh, talk about. So um, the transition, there is a transition ongoing now from you know material paternalism to therapeutic and preventive alliance, as I would call, like to call, and this involves a stronger partnership between clinician and uh, the patients, uh, and um, you know you want um, patient to be heavily engaged in. Uh, his or her own health care. Um, this involves, uh, this means that um, we can't simply rely on the data that is co collected during clinical vis visits uh, and uh, there is a necessity of frequent um, interaction between uh, data uh, between the uh, patients and the clinicians but that should be technologically intermediated because clinicians who simply won't have time uh, and so we need to be able to uh, gain insights from patient-generated health data enabled by Internet of Things and um, you know, community-level information, clinical and public health data uh, from, of the types of sci physical, cyber, social uh, and clinical domain, uh, variety. And I think Internet of Things uh, are really uh, making uh, data collections much more possible than it was before and we are able to collect vast variety of data. Um, so the healthcare is going from episodic to continuous, clinic-centric to patient-centric, clinical control to patient-empowered, 
uh, disease focus to beyond medical intervention and trying to keep healthy in fact uh, and from liberated data to uh, 360 degree multimodal data. Uh, uh, now with that it's possible for us to collect data, a massive amount of data for an individual patient. But when you have created that kind of big data, we need to, be, we need to have strategies to uh, get, gain insight from the data and uh, collect actionable information that uh, patients can act upon or clinician can act upon. That means that you need to convert the data. This is data 150 that you get from a sensor that is meaningless. When you have systolic blood pressure of 150 mmHg, that's a label data or information that is somewhat meaningful. Uh, then knowing that this is elevated blood pressure uh, based on the fact that um, the guidance uh, says that uh, if the systolic blood pressure is above 130 or 140 depending upon which guideline you follow, uh, that it is elevated pressure. But this, is, this, this also is not actionable, you need to get a, a level of abstraction such as this is a high limited blood pressure due to hyperthyroidism or hypertension. And that will enable a clinician to choose right the class of medications that can be tried on the patient. And there is a bunch of technology I don't have time to talk about that allows you to go from the raw data to this interpreted data um, uh, and, and much more meaningful data that can be acted upon. So augmented personalized health is a vision to enhance healthcare by using uh, AI techniques uh, on semantically integrated broad variety of data that we are able to now collect. And when you have done that, um, you are able to then, uh, you know, you will you, 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 you be having smart data from the big data. And that would mean that you can answer the questions. What causes my disease severity? How well am I doing with respect to prescribed care plan? Am I uh, deviating from my care plan? Such personalized questions that are uh, individually actionable that uh, you know is uh, that can be answered and um, with that uh, we have formulated a a, a, a series of um, alternatives in health management strategies that is baseline with uh, self monitoring so all the data that is collected is interpreted in the context of your health management goal self appraisal it tells you how well you are doing so the data is more meaningful than simply uh, getting the data. Self-management uh, is um, uh, comparing the care plan that you have determined uh, in, uh, with guidance of uh, your clinician uh, into uh, and, and finding the deviation with their care plan and then uh, getting the uh, help from uh, computational system to uh, close that gap. Uh, intervention uh, helps you decide if the current care plan and its management not work, is not working, then you need to seek out uh, medical intervention, clinical intervention, disease progression and tracking uh, get you longitudinal, longitudinal view of your uh, disease management. And this, all these studies can be individually uh, uh, you know, uh, customized. Now uh, we've, been doing, we've been working with several um, applications, um, ex disease, um, much of this is predicated on us having access to the right clinical ex, uh, expertise as well as patient cohort. Because at Noesis, we uh, typically undertake only the projects that involve end to end from uh, research issues and uh, challenges to uh, being able to uh, evaluate them or deploy them in the real world with the help of uh, ex SME, subject matter experts or domain experts. So um, uh, here are some of the, uh, I'm going to not go through this slide, but in the context of asthma or bariatric, how different issues can be addressed or what kind of questions that can be answered uh, with respect to the five uh, level uh, strategy for healthcare uh, management that uh, I outlined. Uh, let's look at asthma work that we've been doing. Uh, in this particular case, we are collecting data from um, uh, using web services and you know what we call cyber data uh, uh, such as uh, uh, the, uh, the air quality uh, at the location where patient resides or works, uh, pollen count, weather uh, information and so on and so forth and, and ozone and such things. We get personalized health data such as use of Fitbit for uh, activity and sleep monitoring 
uh, peak flow meter for uh, lung functioning in this particular case and mobile app which uh, we are working to now replace using chatbots and we get uh, asthma is a multifactorial disease uh, so you need to get data on many different aspects many factors can affect it uh, we also uh, get data for indoor and then we need to baseline that and uh, interpret that data in the context of uh, clinical uh, 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 information that we have so we have data extracted from um, uh, clinical notes for example we want to know uh, whether the clinician has labeled this patient severely asthmatic or not. Uh, we also want to know whether a patient is obese. Uh, we are, our work is with pediatric, you know, uh, children of uh, ages uh, 5 to 15 and uh, about one third of the patients are obese, about other one third are overweight. And hence, we need to be able to interpret all the data in the, uh, you know, with respect to other uh, data that we have about the patients, clinical data that we have about the patient. Um, now, uh, with the data, uh, uh, we are able to, um, for the short of time, I'm not going to go through all the details of the what we have been able to collect, but so far we have collected data for um, uh, about 80 patients, completed data for about 80 patients, and we'll be uh, going towards um, completing uh, our patient cohort at the end of this study would be 120 patients, and we are doing one month evaluations or uh, 30 uh, three month evaluations with each of the patients um, for each patient then we collect also uh, 29 or actually more now more than 29 parameters every day and uh, they result in 1862 data points per day we have had a, a high compliance uh, so uh, significant majority of patients have more than 75 percent of the data that are uh, you know that are uh, observable just to give you a context of how uh, these particular steps, there are several studies uh, that deal with um, uh, generic uh, data collection and longitudinal data collection, or you know, while uh, and and with fewer parameters, uh, but with potentially larger uh, patient cohorts, or or uh, they, some of the, the evaluations are on healthy patients or healthy uh, people also, um, and um, in our case, we are more going towards. Um, uh, very extensive data collection so that we can understand the disease, uh, you know, uh, and especially asthma, which is a complicated disease to understand. We can understand uh, how, you know, the disease related issues much more detail at an individual level. We have built a dashboard uh, and that helps us study. For example, you can see here the symptoms of an individual patient and um, you can see uh, medication that the patient might have taken and you can see all kind of indoor and outdoor parameters and you can see potential correlations and then you can validate, do data analysis doing data science techniques uh, to um, uh, find out the, uh, you know, the, how, how well that correlation holds. So here's an example for a patient. Uh, we found that uh, there is a strong correlation between high pollen and ozone, uh, but not that much with particulate matter. For another patient, we found high correlation with indoor uh, parameters. We also been able to do uh, group level uh, studies, for example, with increasing number of symptoms uh, for severe and moderate asthma patients. Uh, we, we were able to uh, track increased usage of shock acting bronchodilator SABA. Um, or uh, we found that uh, chest tightness, um, wheezing, hard or fast uh, breathing uh, affects a number of uh, uh, sleep minutes. Or we have found the correlation with um, um, you know, deep sleep uh, for moderate and um, mild asthmatic patients and then we can fit all the data into a regression model to predict outcomes uh, and in particular we uh, want to uh, work towards creating individualized risk assessment model given all the data that we've been continuously collecting for that patient uh, what level of control we have for the asthma and then another computation that we would be doing is called vulnerability score where we can predict a likelihood of adverse uh, outcome or a, a symptom or other things 
uh, that patient can uh, act upon to prevent by taking say timely medication. Uh, similarly, we have worked with bariatric uh, surgery patients. Uh, uh, I will pass this uh, given the short of time. Of course, you have to customize your data collection, use of Internet of Things, other things with regards to that particular patient, with regards to that kind of population, age, and many other and, and, and living condition, other things have to be factored in. And there's a lot of things that we learned over the period of time in, in this context. So. Um, one last point I want to very quickly mention is that, um, um, and especially with the um, uh, progress in conversational AI, is the ability to engage the patients better than before. Um, we are able to kind of go up the media richness curve uh, and be able to collect more data uh, more often in a more naturalistic way using the uh, coming technologies such as chatbot. So we develop both a text and voice based chatbot. And there are uh, a number of um, interesting issues. Um, uh, I, have a, I have another keynote on chatbot that uh, focuses on uh, development of human-like chatbot uh, for uh, narrow uh, and deep, uh, you know, applications. Uh, it is very hard, uh, at least for now, uh, to create a chatbot uh, uh, that that covers a lot of different domains and a lot of different topics. So open, you know. Um, uh, a chatbot that is not constrained by domain is rather hard to develop um, and it's shallow. Uh, we are focusing on creating healthcare chatbots uh, on specific disease and particularly right now we are working on asthma and uh, depression. Uh, working with, for the depression we are working with clinical psychologists. So um, and some of the key issues there is to how to contact, contextualize conversations. So here if you ask something um, you know, a patient asks, uh, tell me about BU, the system may not understanding if it does not have the domain knowledge. If it has the domain knowledge, it will be able to answer those questions much more effectively. Or personalize it. So you ask a question, you get a generic answer, but if you, uh, you know, if you have all that data, for example, the kind of data that I said we collect about for asthmatic uh, patient, then it will be able to customize the answer based on all the data uh, and situation that the system knows about the patient without having to actually converse with the patients to collect all that data. So it's important to use IoT data uh, to personalize uh, the conversation with a, uh, uh, you know, with a user. And then abstraction in that users don't like, you know, uh, all that just numbers may not be very meaningful. What is important is that, oh, weather is good today, weather is normal for this time of the year. Or if something is different, there's high pollen, and today you need to take care, right? So um, what is interesting is to use sensor, social, clinical data for essentially informing your communication with the patients in a healthcare chatbot. And uh, you know this is generally so, you know some technologies that we are using uh, in 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 in, develop, in building this chatbot. Uh, and then there is a slide that puts together how context, personalization, abstraction help in developing chatbot. Uh, the other talk gives you uh, prototype uh, demonstrations also of the prototypes. Finally, uh, why collaborate? Uh, so it's wonderful that this alliance is being put together. In my view, um, healthcare solutions are inherently challenging, especially use of technology in healthcare is very challenging, it's not a matter of technology alone. You need to have access to uh, relevant clinical expertise. You need to have a diverse and representative patient cohort uh, for clinical evaluations without the evaluation. Uh, just putting together technology has no value. Uh, you of course need researchers and technologists and uh, unique technologies that are appropriate to the deployment environment. So for example, I'm uh, very interested in taking some of the technologies we have built and deploying large scale study in India if that is possible, if we have the own partners and we're looking for such partners. Uh, but uh, at that point we have to once again ask the questions, the technology, its cost, its deployment environment, um, and how will it function in the intended um, uh, case. In our case to make our technology work, for example, in um, the particular uh, environment uh, that uh, Dayton Children's uh, uh, works and its patients uh, live in uh, required substantial effort to make sure 
uh, things uh, are appropriate for that, those particular usage. Finally, um, I have a, uh, this is just my health uh, team that is involved in the asthma uh, project, but the other people involved in depression and uh, uh, other things and uh, part of my uh, NOESIS team. Thank you very much.